Today, let us study God's Word with the sermon titled, Our Relationship with God. Isn't it written in the Bible that none of the creatures in this world were created without God's will? This includes humans, fishes in the sea, birds in the sky, animals in the field, and all kinds of trees. Whether it is the world of animals, the world of plants, or the world of inanimate objects, God created them and put them in specific places, in specific positions, and at specific times, for specific reasons. In other words, nothing exists in the world coincidentally. Our relationship with God, people around us, nature, and everything else which God has created are all connected through an invisible network. It means that everything has a relationship with each other. Our relationship with God is not an ordinary relationship. Although we were a group of angels who sinned in heaven without understanding the will of God, and we were expelled to this earth, now we know the mysteries of God because He has granted us a divine realization. God has opened the glorious way to return to our heavenly country and established a very important relationship with us. What kind of relationship do we have with God? God has made known to us that we are His children. We were originally father and mother's children in the kingdom of heaven. Since we have such a close relationship with God, how do all the spiritual beings of heaven feel about us? They all envy us. For the sermon I am delivering today, titled, Our Relationship with God, I'd like to briefly introduce the relationship between two people named Churchill and Fleming. There was a young man born to a wealthy, noble family in the United Kingdom. One day, he traveled to the countryside. While walking, he saw an extremely beautiful lake. Being fascinated by the lake, he ran downhill toward it. However, he slipped and fell into the water. Since he had never learned how to swim, he started floundering in the lake. If no one came and saved him from his predicament, he would have died. Right at that moment, a young country boy jumped into the water and saved his life. This incident created a very important relationship between the two of them. The young man profusely thanked the boy for jumping into the lake at the risk of his own life to save him. The young boy responded, Anybody would have done the same if someone were in a dangerous situation. After a brief conversation, they said goodbye to each other and went their own way. Ten years passed since that incident. One day, the young man from the city thought about what happened ten years prior, and he really wanted to meet the boy who had saved him. So he went back to the village and found the boy, who had grown up to be a young man. The two men talked about what happened ten years ago. He said to the young man, I never forgot about the day you saved me. I cannot thank you enough. That is why I came back to this village to find you. He then asked the young man, What is your dream? The young man replied, I want to become a doctor in order to save many people. My family is too poor to support my studies. However, I still dream about becoming a doctor. After the man from the city returned home, 
He spoke with his father, who was wealthy. Ten years ago, I almost drowned when I fell into a lake. At that time, a young boy came to my rescue. Recently, I went back to that village after ten years to meet the young boy again. He is now a young man. The young man said that his dream is to become a doctor. However, his family cannot financially support him. Then he asked his father, would you be able to help him? His parents decided to sponsor the young man with the tuition so that he could study to become a doctor. With their support for tuition, the young man studied hard. This young man is Fleming, who became the doctor that discovered penicillin. The man from the city was Churchill, who served as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. This is the story of how these two men met. After some time passed, World War II broke out. During the war, Churchill contracted pneumonia with a high fever while visiting the Middle East. In those days, pneumonia was considered an incurable disease. However, Fleming was able to save Churchill with the penicillin he had discovered. We can say that these two men are historical figures who were meant to meet each other. Isn't this a life-changing relationship? Fleming was able to become a world-renowned influential doctor because he met Churchill. And Churchill was saved from death by the very penicillin that Dr. Fleming discovered. What an important relationship they had in changing each other's lives. People may think these things happen by coincidence. However, in this world, nothing ever happens by coincidence. Doesn't everything that God has planned contain His providence? As for us, we could have been born in the age of the Father or in the age of the Son. However, God sent us from heaven to the earth in this age of the Holy Spirit and led us to the precious truth of the new covenant so that we can meet God the Father and receive God the Mother through Him. The fact that we have this relationship with God makes the heavenly angels envy us. Since many people do not realize or understand this important relationship that we have with God, He teaches us through the Bible what is the kind of life that He wants us to live. Let's see the book of John, chapter 13, verse 4. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Here, we can see that Jesus and Peter have a truly precious and unbreakable relationship. When Jesus said to Peter, I will make you a fisher of men, follow me, Peter immediately embraced the relationship that Jesus offered to him. Leaving his net and boat, he followed Jesus, having his eyes fixed only on him. He was an apostle with such a great faith. Before starting the Passover ceremony, Jesus first carried out the foot washing ceremony. He washed the feet of all the disciples. When he was about to wash Peter's feet, Peter rejected it, saying, 
you shall never wash my feet. However, what did Jesus say would happen to their relationship if he did not wash Peter's feet? What does it mean that Peter will have no part with him? It means that their spiritual relationship will be cut off. To teach us this important matter of creating the spiritual relationship or breaking it, God established the decrees, laws, and statutes of the new covenant. Isn't the foot washing ceremony part of the Passover regulation? Jesus said, If you don't do this one part of the ceremony, you and I will have no part with each other. Our relationship will be broken. Let's see one more scripture in Numbers chapter 9. In chapter 9, verse 1, it is written, The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, Have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 6, But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, We have become unclean because of a dead body. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body, or are away on a journey, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They are to celebrate it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if a man who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, that person, what will happen to that person? He must be cut off from his people. That person will be cut off from his people means that the person's relationship with God will be broken. Our relationship with God is made through God's decrees, laws, and covenant. Yet it is also through God's decrees, laws, and covenant that our relationship with God can be broken. Therefore, it is important for us to keep all God's decrees, statutes, and laws. We must keep the Sabbath day, and we must keep the Passover. I would like to ask all the children of Zion to obey and keep God's decrees, statutes, and commandments that God has appointed for us. Hoping you have received much grace, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.